Uh, I'm going to give you the three D's of change. The three D's of change. And it's from our notes last night. Um, and I thank everyone for being here. But uh, last night, uh, we, we showed this last night. I probably don't have as many papers as I had last night, so I have to pass it around for those who weren't here. But the question says, who wants change? And everybody has their hands up. <laughs> Everybody's hands is up. Right. Amen. It says who, who it says who wants to change? No hands went up. <laughs> the next question says who wants to lead lead the change? Everybody left. <laughs> so a lot of times we uh, we want change. We say something that I, I, I like to say because it's, it's something that we all a lot of us want to do. Uh, or want to do, or maybe a desire to do. How many people want to lose weight? Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, I want to lose weight. Yeah. Brother, even Minister Will just put his hand up. I just was talking. <laughs> but how many people are going to do what it takes to lose it? Right. Y'all got quiet. As Minister Steph says, crickets. So I'm saying that a lot of times we want things to happen, we right. want change, but then we don't do the necessary things we need to do right. to bring change. Um, I'm not going to put the camera on you, but give me some reasons why you think we don't see change. You can shout it out. I'll say it over the mic. I'm not going to flash the camera. Why do you think we don't see change that we want to see in our life? Just give me some answers. We're afraid of change. Very good. Why do you think we don't see change? Someone else. Why don't we see the change? If you want to lose, I'm just saying, if we want to lose weight, why won't we? Why don't we lose it? Because we procrastinate. Procrastinate. Very good. We want what we want. You say, Brother Martina. Start and stop. So good. We start and stop. So I don't really just do teachings or messages just to hear myself talk or just to say, well, we had a good sermon. Because I want to see change in your lives. I want to provoke you and challenge you and maybe some of you make it angry enough to say, Pastor Mark made me so angry, I'm just going to do what I got to do. That's good. <laughs> You know, it's just like parents. Sometimes you ask your kids to do certain things, they don't do it, and they say they get so angry. They say, "I'm just going to do what they ask me to do, just to shut them up." Right, right, right. Yeah. Let me take a drink to that. <laughs> Prophets are called to shift atmospheres and produce change. So I'm called to to challenge you to change and to be your best self in the earth. Amen. I'm not just here to preach good messages. I'm not just here to preach good sermons. I'm not just here, but I'm here to shake you and, and to motivate you so you can do what it is that God has placed you here on planet Earth to do. How many people believe that God placed you here for a reason? Yeah. Let me see your hands. How many people really believe, you really believe that in spite of the hell you went through, God put you here for a reason? How many believe you have the purpose of God on the inside of you? Amen. 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 So we have to be intentional. Say intentional. intentional. We have to be intentional about why God put me here, uh, put us here in the earth. So I'm going to give you three D's of change. I'm going to give you three. Number one, some of y'all were here last night, but it's worth hearing again. Number one, you have to make a conscious decision to change. Everybody shout decision. decision. Whatever changes you're going to make, whatever you're going to do to better your life, whatever you're going to do to better your ministry, whatever you're going to do to advance yourself, whatever you're going to do, whether it's to go to school, whether it's to get a good job, whether it's to clean your house, whether it's to organize yourself, whether it's to declutter your life, you have to make a conscious decision that I'm going to do what i got to do come hell or high water. As I shared last time, I have made it in my mind as God's manservant, as his mouthpiece, as his spokesman, I have made up my mind that no matter Vani, who comes and who goes, I'm going to do what God called me to do. Amen. No matter who gets mad, no matter who doesn't like my style, no matter who doesn't like my delivery, no matter who don't like my dread, y'all not saying that, no matter who don't like whatever they like, I've made a conscious decision that I'm going to do what it is that God has called me to do. No matter what your race may be, no matter what your color may be, I've made a conscious decision because I belong to God. Amen. I'm going to answer the call that's placed upon my life. And my heart cry is to love God's people. Through the rejection I went through in my life and finding out at an early age I was adopted and not knowing who my natural parents were. So feeling so rejected at such a young age in my life. And uh, we can either decide to be better or bitter, but we can't be both. 
And I chose, I made a conscious decision, you know what, I'm not going to sit around and have a pity party. I'm not going to wonder who my parents are, although I would like to know if I know, find or not, I know who my father is, our heavenly father, he's God. But God chose two phenomenal people, my mom and dad, my dad's still living, my mom went home to be with the Lord in 2003, but he, cho he chose two phenomenal people mm -hmm. to, 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 to birth, to birth, to raise me mm -hmm. after I was birthed. Okay. So I thank God because I could I could sit around and have a pity party and wonder, well, who is this? Why did that? Da, 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 whatever the case may be. But I thank God I'm still here. Yeah. And a lot of times what it is when you have the strong call of God upon your life, what it is the enemy wants to fight you from even getting on the scene. Y'all not saying that. Before. He tried to stop Jesus from getting on the scene as a baby. So you got to make a conscious decision. Okay, I'm here. Yes. I survived my boo leaving me. I'm not saying nothing. I survived the drama. I survived this. So I'm going to press it. I'm going to kick my heels in. And I'm going to do what God has placed upon my heart to do. you got to make a conscious decision. Because you're going to have something that don't like you. You're going to have something that don't agree with you. You're going to have something that just don't like you doing what it is that God has wanted you to do and called you to do. But you got to make a conscious decision. Come hell or high water. You didn't call me. You didn't anoint me. This brief. I'm going to do what God called me to do. If you like it, fine. If you don't, fine. And let me tell you something. Every leader is not for everybody. Every leader is not for everybody. There may be some people on TV I like to watch, but it may be some other leaders you may not like, or I might not like you, but I'm not going to bash the person that sold into your life. I'm not going to bash the person that, that you like on TV because you grow from them, because I'm a mature leader. And I said this to Pastor Bev uh, probably some months ago. I said, let me tell you something. If you are a mature Christian in God, <coughs> let, me, let me stand up here. <laughs> if you are a mature Christian in God, you can receive from any man or woman of God, even if they're not your style. I hear y'all preaching in the audience. Somebody <laughs> says about something about a donkey. Yeah. When you're a mature Christian, even if you're not in your flavor of service. Yes. Even if you're not around what you used to be, if you have the heart of God and you're mature, you can sit down and hear from anybody. I, I listen to a lot of speakers sometimes on Christian TV that I wouldn't normally listen to, just to just, just to discipline myself and listen. And, and, and you'd be surprised the nuggets you could pull out. Maybe you like somebody who's a little more jubilistic, or maybe and then maybe you hear somebody who's real quiet. You're like, oh my God, it's so boring. Listen to the wisdom. <laughs> listen to the wisdom. And I don't care if they're Caucasian, I don't care if they're African American. You, if when you become mature, yeah. you consider the church that may not even be your denomination or your choice. But if you go with a heart saying, you know what, God, I'm going to hear from you. Yeah. You'll be surprised at what God will do in your life. Give God a hand of praise. Yeah. So I want you this morning. We have number one, we have to make a conscious decision to change. Listen to this. James 1, 5 through 8. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally or freely upbraideth and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8 says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You have to decide, you have to choose, you can't be wishy-washy, you can't be one day I'm on, one day I'm off. You can't be one day I love God and one day I want a new God. You can't be healthy. Well, one day I'm going to be healthy. Next day I'm just going to eat, go to the buffet and just sit in my chair in front of the buffet and eat whatever I want. No, you got to make a conscious decision that I'm going to do what it is. And let me tell you something. A lot of times when you're doing things and trying to better yourself spiritually, naturally, your flesh don't feel like doing it. That's right. That's right. you got to bring this flesh under, under subjection. So to all my people, I want you to make a conscious decision. Say a conscious decision. Until you make a conscious decision, nothing's going to happen. Decision is the open door into reality. You have to decide. You have to choose that you're going to do it. And, and, and everything that you choose is going to come with a sacrifice. I have people in here that have been married almost 40 years, 20 some odd years, whatever year. You have to decide, I'm sticking with my spouse come hell or hot water. Now, I know there's circumstances where people cheat or people do, I understand all that. But, you know, you can't always think the grass is green on the other side. You gotta stick it out even in the rough times because it molds you and makes you. Amen? So number one, you have to make a conscious decision. Everybody say decision. decision. And even while I'm on that spill of decision, I want I'm gonna post put this in the atmosphere. This Thursday, August 1st, through September 9th, Monday, September 9th. I myself and some other people on Facebook are going, and you don't have to go, I'm just sharing it with you if you want to jump on board. I have made a con conscious decision, I'm gonna do a 40-day challenge. 
of, of, of I don't cut out a lot of stuff already, but even take it even deeper. What you gonna cut out? I'm gonna cut out like some sweets. I'm enjoying, let me tell you something, I'm enjoying myself to Wednesday. I got some cake I'm gonna get into later. Amen, so I'm gonna enjoy myself. You see what I'm saying? But I made a constitution Thursday, August 1st, through September 9th, I'm gonna do a 40 day challenge to better myself, to, to, to even detox even more, to, to eat uh, more clean stuff and more bright stuff and to give up the pasta, to give up the rice and I got some mac and cheese I'm eat later, but I, 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 I'm gonna give it up on the first. Not forever, but just to bring some things together, just to kind of get to my to my goal weight, amen? So I, I challenge you, if you want to make a conscious decision and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going to change something. I know I've been saying I'm going to clean this house. I ain't cleaning it yet. Pastor Mark, I'm teaching about it. I'm glad he off teaching about it because I still ain't cleaned out the whole closet yet. I still got them drawers and those check, check uh, stubs in my thing. Right there. But make a conscious decision. I'm going to change some things. Let me tell you something. Before you know it, it's going to be Christmas. Before you know it, 2020 is going to be here. What have you done? What have you accomplished? Have you just heard this word week after week and done nothing with it? Nothing's changed. Nothing's better. But I do have some testimonies of people that have gotten their wills. Amen. Got things in order. Got things Because I tell you, as believers, we should have our stuff in order. We should be prime examples. Everything. Our house should be clean. Our car should be clean. We should be clean. We should represent God well wherever we go. On our job. And, I, and it ain't just talking about it and handing out tracks, but it's people seeing your life. And actually, what's this? It's a glow about you. It's something different about you. And then you begin to share the gospel. Give God a hand of praise. So the first key to change is a, a conscious decision. Everybody say a conscious decision. How many people, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying this just to say it, uh, but, but I mean, how many people really know there's some errors where you need to make a conscious decision to do some things? Amen. Conscious decision. Say conscious decision. Conscious decision. Okay, second thing. Point the three the second D. Second th of the three D's of change. Number two is you must possess a strong desire to change. Say desire. Desire. A desire is to wish or long for or crave as strong as a strong craving. How many of us have ever had some cravings? <laughs> You're like, oh I got a I got a taste for a piece of chocolate cake. <laughs> White Castle's known for the crave, and uh, Mrs. Steph told her herself yesterday, said she had the crave. She went to White Castle and had the crave, amen? So we have cravings. Amen. We have desires. You have to desire. I want you to possess a strong desire to change. What do you want to change? I know my sister up here, I see her on Facebook. She be at Planet Fitness. Work it out. She has a desire amen. to change. Amen. And let me tell you something. As long as you got life and you got health, you can change. You can't say, I'm too old, I'm too tired, I'm too this. No, you're not. You still got life. That's right. If the doctor says don't do it, don't, don't do it, don't do it. But if you can do it, you know, we take a little, you might not be able to walk a mile, walk a block. Right. We take our car to go across the street. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So number two, desire. Say desire. Desire. Desire is to wish or long for to crave as a strong craving. I love the scripture. Uh, Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire or crave when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And I'm talking about God desire cravings, not your flesh cravings. My crave is to, my desire is to reach more people. And we're doing what we have to do to, to reach more people around the world through our through our whole page yes. and through uh, the people that God is sending to help us to take it to the next level, to reach more people because I'm not just called to Broadway, New Jersey, I'm called to the world. So I got to do what it takes in technology to get me around the world. Amen? Yes. So the next thing I want to work on, I want to work on some small prayer videos or some yes. small encouraging videos yes. that we can put online and we can boost and get the word out there. That's right. Amen. I don't have to get on a plane to go unless they call me to come, but the slip things that we can do, and then we, we wonder, well, why ain't you making that impact? You have, through technology, yeah, that's right. God has allowed us to make a lasting impact, and we don't have to leave the confines of our home. Yeah, amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. It's so good now. If you want Cheesecake Factory for lunch or dinner, you can do it on your phone, and you don't have to leave your house. You don't have to get, you don't have to, Sister Jackie, shake your head. You ain't got to leave that. You ain't got to get dressed up. You don't have to go out the hot heat. The, the Uber Eats or the Uber Drive will bring that cheesecake back and right to your house. You can set your candles out and you can go to town. They'll bring you a salad if you want it. They'll bring you, you can have a five course meal. That's right. With your robe on. 
I'm being nice. <laughs> Amen. So number two is desire. Everybody shout desire. desire. And, and I just want to say this. Those of us that have God desires, those of us that desire to reach more people, those of us that desire to help more people, take some steps. You don't have to go to Africa to help people. You can go right to New York and help people. You can go right to New York to help people. You can help people on your job. Be nosy in a good way. Just listen to what people say. Yeah. If you hear of a need, meet the need. Right, that's good. That's good. I was out one day just being quiet, having my little social time out, and just listening. I wasn't talking, just sitting there listening. And I heard one lady say that she was uh, going through some things, really going through in her body, blah, 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 blah. And then after it was all over, I said, you know what? I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to pray. She said, oh, thank you so much. She said, I've really been going through. You know, you could, you know, I, I, I believe that as we witness and reach people, that you don't always necessarily have to knock on doors and hand out tracks. And if you do that, that's good. But I believe there's a more innovative way. And I believe that way is just being led by the Spirit of God Amen. and being led by the Holy Spirit and, and having the necessary tools that you need to, to give people and to put people. You know, I was back in my car at the car wash. And I just felt led to give two people like the cards I had in my car. I said, here, God bless you. The guy said, oh, what's this? I said, here, this is for you. You know, just give it out. So I believe that the, this era that we, with the times going and the people the way they are, I, I don't believe it's always the best, but if you do it, I'm not knocking it. But it's the best way just to knock on doors and whatever. Maybe it's just being led by the Spirit of God in shop, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seeing the need, seeing someone's head down, seeing one being, you know, where they're going to live by the Spirit of God or the sons of God. Now, I'm not, I'm not knocking that way, but I believe there's always a better way. There's always, if we would just tune our ears to the Holy Spirit and not allow fear. And even you said, well, you said, well, suppose I give them a the track, they don't take, that's okay. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. They're, they're, they're rejecting their answer. They may be going through, and you, your, your answer, their answer may be you giving them a card to the hope or give, giving them a card or whatever the case may be. If they're rejected, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting what God may want to do in their lives. Amen? Give God a hand of praise. Amen. Number three, the last one for this morning, number three, is be diligent. Everybody say diligent. Diligent. Dil diligently apply the truths of God's word day after day. It's what we diligently do. It's not what we do. It's not working out once a month that's going to give you results. Come on. It's not eating right once a month that's going to get you. Let me tell you something. You look at people like uh, uh, Brother Andre Becker that are fit, that they, they, that they, uh, they, they, uh, they belly ain't over their belt. They just ain't wake up like that. I'm trying to get there, Lord. Amen. <laughs> You see people that are fit, that look good. They end up rolling to bed like that. They make a conscious decision to work out. Amen. They make a con You see people that look good, that invest in themselves. The hair looks nice. The clothes look nice. They, 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 they invest in themselves. I'm, you got to love yourself enough to invest in yourself. You say, well, I'm just by myself. Well, you may not be by yourself if you invest in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and, and, and you know, stop wearing, stop, I, I'm going to use that for my show, but stop wearing them little black bonnets to the to shop, right? You might be meeting your man in the fruit section and you got that black bonnet on your head, amen? So I'm saying, look good wherever you go. Y'all got quiet, I'm sorry, ladies, I didn't mean to mess with y'all little black, black bonnets. Amen? So I'm saying, look good wherever you go. You never know where your divine connection is. All right, y'all got mad at me, but I love you anyway. <laughs> Number three is be diligent. Say diligent. Diligent. diligent means to be done with careful, steady effort. It's not what you do one time. It's what you do day after day after day, week after week. And even when you're eating right and striving to eat right, you're going to have some days where you miss it. But have one day where you miss it, not eight days where you're missing it. I'm just trying to help you because I know about it. I could write a hundred books on that. You can, you can have you gonna have you may have a day when you 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 uh you you flesh out and you 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 eat ten bowls of mac and cheese or you know you eat so that's okay you have you have a little bit get back on track to the next day. All right. A lot of us I don't know why we like it but we like to always start on our Mondays. I'm, oh I can't, I can't start you know, on Monday then Monday turn the next no start the start now say now, now. <laughs> diligently apply. Uh, Proverbs twelve twenty four says the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. To be diligent means to rule, to become a leader, 
to give you power to take control. Proverbs 12, 24 says, work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become a slave. Wow. Proverbs 12, 27 says, a lazy hunter doesn't roast his game, but to a diligent person, his wealth is precious. Hallelujah. Uh, the contemporary English verse says, anyone too lazy to cook will starve. <laughs> Don't you say that, Steph. But a hard worker is a valuable treasure. When you have a hard worker, Pastor Faye, you got a hard worker on your team, they're a valuable treasure to you and a treasure to that company. You got a worker who's always on their phones. <laughs> I heard a whole load on the front row. They're always on their phones. They're checking their emails. They're coming in late. They're taking breaks. They just got there late and still taking a break. <laughs> But you want to be a valuable, you know, let me tell you something. I love when my manager on my job, I take care of people with special needs. And when she walked in the house a few, a uh, couple months ago, about a month or so ago, I was off. Then I came back to work and she stepped into the house. She, was, she, she just stepped in like that. She went, oh, I, I was there. She stepped, she said, oh my God, my house is clean. Because I take care of people in the room. So I believe, you know, when you work on the job, you keep the house clean. That's part of my ministry. Amen. And she said, oh, she said, I had subs here that didn't clean. I said, well, you know what I really do? You know, they just want to come make the money and get bounced. But be, when you're, if you're a valuable employee, I'm close to that. When you're a valuable employee, you should be missed when you're not there. Amen. They should know there's a difference. They should walk in and say, oh, I know market here. Don't, I don't smell no bleach in here. I, I wear a T-shirt. That's my, that's my play T-shirt. I don't wear because I, I got it from my mom. We bleached it. She made us bleach everything. Saturday morning, we had to bleach the counters. Y'all know that I don't mean that spray bleach. We had to get the Clorox bleach. Bleach the counters. Bleach the bathroom. So I still have a bleach on because I know bleach still germs. Amen. But I'm saying, whatever it is you do, wherever it is you are, you're there to make a difference. You're there to make an impact. People should know when you're not there because you're a good worker. They should know when you're not on those phones. They should know. Amen. So I just want to encourage you this morning. Just stop by to, to, to motivate you as we get ready to go in from July into August. August 1st is Thursday. God wants to change. Let me tell you something. God loves you all in here. And God wants to bring change into your life. But what do we have to do? We have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. God's not going to do what you can do. You have to start. You have to start. You have to start. The Bible says, despise not the day of small beginnings. Just make a start. Keep a, you ain't heard from your job, you ain't heard about a job, keep applying. Keep sending your resume out. Keep going. Keep representing. God, somebody's going to, it's going to catch. You say, well, I see, like I just can't get over this. I see, like I just can't put, the, I can't put them sodas down. I just can't put that, that pork bacon down. I got quiet. I just can't, I just can't put it down. I just pass my I know the struggle. My store is right next door to a deli, and I have to come out some mornings and smell the aroma of pork bacon. Y'all got quiet. Now I ain't bothering your pork if you don't want to give it up. I ain't bothering. I'm just talking about me. I know the struggle of wanting things that can't happen because I'm striving to be healthy, try, trying to keep all my numbers and everything good so I can live long and live strong. I can't say I want to preach the gospel. I can't say I want to go around the world. I can't say I want to help people and then I'm unhealthy. Now, like Dr. Oz, he said, even if you do 80-20, you do eight, you know, even if you do five days straight, five days straight, I'm gonna help y'all today because y'all looking at me. Even if you do five days straight, Monday through Friday, but then Saturday and Sunday, you all right. Amen. So at least you're doing more right than wrong. Make small changes. Because let me tell you something. As African American race and as other races, let me tell you something. If you don't do right and eat right, it's gonna catch up with you. I don't want nothing catching up with me. I want it. You can't pray over the poor because they cast out this all this in Jesus' name. No, that soul was up in there. You can't cast out all that hog. <laughs> I ain't bothering y'all. If y'all don't want to give it up, I'm, I'm talking about me. So he's talking about himself. About himself. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. People get mad. You talk about you talk about their food. I know y'all. You talk about their food. You talk about their children. <laughs> hey, that's right. We're not to have somebody. I have that Andre take me to my car. Be my bodyguard. Right. <laughs> 
Don't talk about they fool. They smile, everybody's smiling now. They cheering. I don't care how bad they are, don't you put your mouth on them. And they money. Oh yeah. And my mother going home to be a boss, so she can't hear me now, but I can say it now. She ain't here, she might get me in heaven. <laughs> Baby, and don't mess with no lady's cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> I say, mommy, give them cigarettes. She be fighting that, she better ready to beat them. Don't you mess with no lady's cigarettes. You will get the beat down. Okay, I'm gonna give God a praise. <laughs> He gonna give me when I get to heaven, but she ain't here now, so I can get away with it. Let's give God a hand of praise. God bless you. I'm through in Jesus' name.